Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Cox. I'm a member of the Net Capital team, and I'm joined by a fellow member, Thomas Smith. Go ahead and say hey, Tom. Hey, everyone. How are you? Let's allow one moment for everyone to settle in. Thanks. All right, welcome again. Today is the second webinar of our three-part March Demo Day series. The theme today, Advanced Technologies. And four companies will present, MyXR, Tala, BN Nano, and Dashable, in that order if you're interested. Yesterday, three companies presented in the medtech and biotech spaces, T-Reveal Therapeutics, Red Oak Instruments, and Phoenix Pharma Labs. That webinar was recorded and is available on the Net Capital YouTube page. I will add a link to that shortly. Uh, tomorrow, the party keeps going. Three more companies will present, this time in the consumer goods and technology space. That will be HubSide, Greenbox Robotics, and Mosquito Steve. So please join us again tomorrow uh, to keep the good times rolling. Uh, as I mentioned today, I'm excited to welcome MyXR, Tala, BN, Nano, and Dashable. As always, each of these companies is actively raising capital on the Net Capital platform. I have added a link to each in the chat feature provided by Zoom. A few quick housekeeping items. Uh, we will allow five minutes for presentations, uh, followed by five minutes of Q&A. We do want to keep this as interactive as possible, so please do use that Q&A functionality. I know Zoom also has a chat feature, but Q&A makes it so much easier to track all the questions as they come in to make sure that we get to as many of them as possible. So after all four of these pitches, each company will have a moment for closing remarks. So please do stick around to the end and panelists, please do stick around as well. Uh, with all that being said, please join me in welcoming my XR to the stage. Hans, why don't you come on in and tell us what you're building? Excellent. Hey, great to, great to be here with everybody and what great companies to, to be alongside uh, Demo Day here today. Let me share my screen and we can go through this. Um, one of my team members actually uh, said, uh, it's pretty hard to describe Game of Thrones in a deck. And so we always have that problem because we have so much going on. Um, but why don't, we, why don't we go ahead and get started here? Um, we're happy to be on Net Capital. Um, this is our, our sort of our chance to bring our opportunity to the, the wider audience. We're building a SaaS white label um, augmented reality ecosystem that includes engagement and rewards and everything. And we're doing that for this worldwide set of customers and clients that we have. And we're trying to keep that as simple as possible on our platforms. We're targeting a market that is, is actually over a trillion. When we think about it, gamification, loyalty, and augmented reality, that's one part, but it's all of these other industries where clients have come to us. Over the last three years, we were founded in 2017. We've done um, R&D, we've done proof of concept, we've built the company, we've changed some things, and so that, that way we've We've been cleaning house and building for the last three years, and we're excited of where we are today. Since last year, we've had a 22 times uh, increase in inbound from all over the world for all of our platforms, and I'll start to describe those. The first one is Engage 2.0. That's a multi-format, uh, multi-vertical gamification reward platform. The second one is our experience platform, and I'll introduce that in a second. That's about augmented reality syndication, scalable platforms of entertainment and education. Engage 2.0 is a, is a software that we bought in 2018. Here you see how Dunkin' Donuts, you could literally walk through and watch a video and get points for doing it. It rewards people for doing things in life. Multiple formats, easy to scale, easy to implement. It's a SDK that we put into other people's products and it makes them better. 
It was originally built by Coinin in 20, and we bought it in 2018. Um, they put over $3 million into building it and it's robust. That's why we bought the, bought the company. So we're bringing that to market. We know it works, has incredible impact on, on product, four times usage, increased downloads, et cetera. And where we are today with this particular product is that we have this global demand in multiple countries, millions of people, and we know everything about them. So we're excited to bring this to market. And we'll be doing it in different verticals. Our base version is gonna come out first, enterprise, community. So you think about states, governments, et cetera, education and schools. We're working with LA Unified School District, et cetera, um, insure tech, health tech, and uh, then our music version, which is coming out. Now I wanna introduce the experience platform, which we're reintroducing as T1 and TX. Syndicated, think about it as MyXR TV. We started in 2018 and did a proof of concept with the 49ers and Levi's bringing AR to their platforms in this super seamless way. We learned things, we made things better, and now we're expanding into a cloud-based AR syndication platform that will now be distributed around the world. So when we think about revenue, there's sort of two things to, to remember. We have two main product lines that are related in terms of they're driven off the platform, cloud-based SaaS. They work on licenses, subscriptions, and then uh, the revenue that comes from those. Originally, we were divided up in two main revenue categories. We've expanded that and allowed the products to grow organically and to develop new revenue streams. And we've been able to prove that we can make money because we've done it since 2018. We have incredible partners in allowing us to scale globally. So when we look about the economic impact, the contracts, usually 13 to 25 months, including a 30-day trial, those are going to start contributing an ARR of about 34 million in 12 to 18 months. We project 11 million in 2021. That may increase. Right now, we're keeping that at 11 million just for everybody's benefit. And we've got a product pipeline that is literally uh, embedded with new features that will be coming out over the next uh, three quarters. We have an incredible team, global team. This is just some of the people, including Jim Wyatt, who's uh, former head of William Morris, Brandon Slam Bailey. You may know him from Sticks from Watts, works with all sorts of brands. We're really a global team that's really putting things together. And because we're so positive on what we're doing. We're also making a commitment of 5% of our profits back to the communities that are underserved. And we're gonna be creating the MyXR Foundation to do that. So here's, here's where we are in terms of the capital raise. 750 has come in since 2018. That generated about 625,000 in revenue. Today we have until Friday actually, the net capital campaign, 250,000 um, at 344 to share valuation at roughly 15 million. While the net capital thing was going, we also received a term sheet for 1.5 million and 1 million of that is already committed. So we're moving as fast and as quickly and as amazing, we're, we're having fun. Here are the things to remember, we're post-revenue, we do multi-year contracts, unbelievable upside monetization on our platforms. We have resellers in the market, high margin because the technology, most of it is already built, multiple streams of revenue, and uh, just a global team of incredible things. So we always think about inspiration. So we always go back to, to Nipsey's thing. The best thing you can do for a person is to inspire them. That's what we try to do with all of our products. And we'd love to have uh, all of the investors that are on today to join us on our mission. Thank you so much for that, Han. Um, and I know we've spoken about this quite a bit, um, but I love you know, to start us off as we as we begin to talk here. Can you, can you tell the people kind of like a real kind of tangible example? You've you've had a pretty good a chunk of traction. Uh, you, you know, obviously it's some real revenue. Can you give the people at home an, an example of probably from if, if you could blend both the reward side and the, the augmented side as well, but or just a couple of different anecdotes that think would be really helpful for the listeners? Well, I, I think there's you know when we think about education. What we're bringing to education is a great example. Um, and you think about that in terms of whether it's enterprise or whether it's community. Education and information is important. 
if we look at how we're using this in the school version, we're actually going to be educating students with information that they already have. So by plugging into their existing online learning platforms, we're actually gamifying that, rewarding them to do that. Now, as, as students are getting points for and rewards for doing homework or doing extra things, we're getting involved with their community, we're now actually being able to, to give them more content in terms of experience our MyXR portal, where all of a sudden they can learn about history in a real time augmented reality way without having to travel or, or do anything. So we want to inspire with augmented reality. We want, we know that that is a, both a useful tool, but also a super important information transfer tool, but gamify the whole experience. Thanks for that. Um, Tom, you want to come on in and uh, ask the, uh, the next question that's coming in here? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, Thank you. And, well, thanks, Hans. Um, yeah, if you could just let people know a little bit about, you know, I know you touched upon a little bit about the traction that you've generated, but can you dive in that a little bit further about where the company, you know, what you've done since really 2018 until now and what's so exciting about 2021? I think what, what, what really changed to 2018, we came out guns blazing with, you know, a long-term deal with the 49ers. Everybody thought we were a sports marketing company. Um, what we are not is esports marketing. That is one piece of our puzzle. What I think happened in 2020 um, was the user behavior changed in part because of COVID. So you have all of these, these whether it's a team, a school, uh, a hotel chain, a uh, government, wanting to engage their, their existing people in an entirely different way and in a, a way that's, that's bringing... So, our inbound came out of need. And in fact, a lot of what we do is built on need. It starts with the user. What do they need? And how do we create something for them as opposed to creating something and just assume that they'll take it? So we start with our clients and they came to us saying, we need to reach our people. Yeah. And we're talking about a massive trillion dollar market when you factor in all the pieces. So can you talk about the players that are in the space? What does the competitive landscape look like? And how are you primed to differentiate yourself from the other, uh, from the competitors? Well, I, I think there are two things. From the reward and gamification side, um, we actually held the product back. We bought it in 2018. We held it back because there were a lot of reward players, reward software players in the market. Um, what our software is different is that it rewards people for their time, not just a purchase. And so the application in today is we're the sort of first mover advantage in today's market where we wanna reward people for their time. So um, from reward platforms and the flexibility of that, we're in a great place as well as our, our deep um, bench of partners that are gonna be deploying this. Um, on the augmented reality side, it's because we look at it differently. We actually love working with our competitors uh, in the sense of, we, we're, we're not trying to be everything to everybody. We're going to be the platform that then distributes the amazing AR content. So a lot of the work that's been done in augmented reality over the last three years has been on content creation and tools to do that. We now can distribute that to a much broader audience. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that, Hans. That brings us right up to the time. So that's perfect, perfect timing. Um, up next, help me, please join me in welcoming Matthew Stringer, onto the, the line here to tell us a little bit about what he's building at Tala. Come on in here, Matt. Great. Thanks so much, Eric. And thank you for everyone uh, for logging on today. Really appreciate the time. Um, as Eric mentioned, my name is Matt Stringer. I lead customer success here at Tala. Um, so really involved with our customers right from the moment that they start coming on board with us all throughout their implementation life cycle uh, to make sure that they're really seeing the maximum value um, out of our product. Um, so our presentation today is going to have two parts. Uh, so we're going to start by sharing a, a brief overview of our products and services, and then we're actually going to dive into a live demo uh, for you as well, so you can see what this looks and feels like. Uh, so here at Tala, uh, we support our customers in three different ways. Uh, our AI and automation platform can serve as a first line of support for end customers, and we call that customer assist. We can also leverage that same infrastructure to support internal agents, we call that agent assist. 
And we also work with our partners to build and implement custom workflow automations uh, to connect their disjointed systems and streamline their, their workflows. Uh, just a quick, uh, quick snapshot at Tala by the numbers for you. Uh, some of our customers, they see value with us by um, empowering their customers to self-serve on up to 90% of support questions at first contact, um, giving their agents the opportunity to answer 25% more support resolutions. And for our customers who've chosen to implement our automation platform to support their call center teams, we're able to reduce call support time by about 10%. The data shows that on average, internal employees are spending about two hours a day looking for the information that they need to do their job. Uh, Tala can bring this down to a matter of seconds uh, by connecting to your existing knowledge resources and surfacing that relevant information wherever your agents uh, or customers are working online and by providing actionable insights uh, to your knowledge management team. To give you a better look of what this might look like, uh, here's an example of, uh, of a Tala deployment that we've kind of spun up an example of what this might look like for the Net Capital Advisors team. Um, so on the left, you can see we have our Tala customer assist bot uh, that's working on a public website. Some of our customers have also chosen to deploy Tala from within their applications as a one-stop shop for in-app support. And on the right, we have a, a diagram showing just a, a handful of some of the solutions that we can connect to out of the box uh, to scrape content, identify answers, and service those up to users online. Tala can also be configured to recognize scenarios in which follow-up questions might be needed uh, to gather more context from end customers before either dropping them off at the relevant content to answer their question or to escalate them on to, to an additional process and kick off that relevant workflow. And so because Tala uh, is trained by your subject matter experts, and we're gonna show you our intuitive zero code uh, training portal in just a moment, uh, because Tala is trained by your experts and we retain that information for future use cases, uh, we like to say that Tala makes all of your people your best people. And so with that, I'm going to jump over into a, a live demonstration that we had prepared here. Um, you can see we took the liberty of uh, putting this up on the Net Capital Advisors website. And um, if I wanted to ask a, a question, right, I can engage with Tala here in the bottom of the screen. Um, and I can ask it a number of different things. Um, so for example, does Net Capital offer consulting services for tech companies? Right. So right away, you can see that Tala is able to serve up an answer to me. But two really cool things that are happening under the hood is that we're not just returning a whole article or a wall of text that contains a relevant answer. We're actually just getting you a relevant snippet. And also what we did before the demo is I told Tala to point at this public website and actually scrape through to that content. So if you wanted to pull through to the relevant source article, you can see exactly where Tala is sourcing that information from uh, and getting that right to the end user where they need access to it. The next situation we have here is uh, what happens when someone asks a question where either we don't have a good answer in our knowledge base, or maybe they're asking that question in such a way that doesn't really match up with the content that we have in our knowledge base. In these types of situations, Tala is going to try and support uh, the customer by giving an answer. Um, but if the agent chooses to get an answer from an expert, we call this creating a knowledge gap in Tala. Um, and so I'm just going to input my email here. And provide any additional context that I'd like and click submit. Now, once I open up this training request in Tala, we're going to see two things happen. Uh, the first is uh, I'm going to get notified as a subject matter expert that someone's created a training request in the portal that I need to go and teach the bot how to answer this question in the future. Um, but also to showcase some of the inter integrations that we have on display, um, I've connected this up with a third party live chat solution uh, to seamlessly package up the support request and send it on downstream. Uh, and so for the purpose of this demo, we've chosen Zendesk's live chat support, which you can see that happened here. Uh, so you notice that in Slack, I've just been notified that a customer has submitted a training request. So I'm gonna go ahead here and put on my knowledge manager cap um, and jump away from the customer facing scene. Um, and I can open up this training request by hitting the link here. Um, and this is gonna bring us into really the, the bread and butter of our application. And that's the, that's the Tala training portal. 
Um, so unlike some other solutions on the market that require engineering resources uh, to upload the many different intents, the, the ways that people could be asking questions, uh, Tala is identifying and surfacing these opportunities to improve the accuracy of the bot uh, to your subject matter experts on the floor. And there's really no technical expertise needed to train the solution. I can assign this task to someone else on my team if I'd like, or I can choose to answer it myself with one of three different methods. I can choose to collect more information. So that's building out one of those diagnostic decision trees that we talked about in the last presentation. I can choose to create some content to add it to my knowledge base, um, or I can choose to find some existing content. Um, in this case, I've purposefully uh, asked a question. I've purposely asked a question uh, in a different way than some content that I have in my knowledge base that really is going to answer that question. So in this case, someone said, I'd like to list an offering on your network. Uh, I know that means, oh, someone could register their business with us at Net Capital. I can select that relevant answer, click save and send. And now two things are going to happen simultaneously. The first is that we're getting that answer back to the end customer. But if someone else was to come back to the platform and ask the Tal about this on a future instance, um, we've now retained that type of answer. And we can service that up, whether it's an internal uh, employee asking that or a customer online. And we can route that customer directly to the place that they need to be to, to sign up for Net Capital. Last moment here. Yep, so just to be conscious for time, uh, that does wrap up our, uh, our time. Um, so thanks for, for checking in on that, Eric. Um, and we definitely wanna open it up for any questions. Thanks, Matt, and, and thanks for giving the folks the overview on Tala. Um, first question that's coming in is, uh, how big is the market for your product? If you could just dive in a little further on that. Mm -hmm. um, so we we have three three different addressable markets that we're looking at um, that definitely take a sizable chunk, and and really Tala sits at the nexus of all three of these, um, and so that's going to be kind of your knowledge bases right, your chat bots, right, so the way that you're servicing that up, as well as the robotic process automation. Uh, so those are the three different TAMs that, that we're going after. Um, and we're able to kind of sit at the nexus of those three and kind of stitch them together. Awesome. All right. uh, the ne next question that came in here is about the uh, competitive landscape. How will you compete against entrenched incumbents like Intercom? Yep. So that's a great question. Um, and so there's a few different ways that we can approach this. Um, so we see some folks like Intercom, as well as some other players like Drift, who tend to focus on a specific vertical. So really more on kind of that sales side, that sales support. Um, we also have some other players um, that we see that we run into, folks like Ada and Guru, um, who are also doing fantastic things in the marketplace. But what we see that really sets us aside and makes Tali unique is the speed to deploy our solution and the ease of training. Um, so we can see that our bot can be deployed in as little as two weeks because we leverage your, your existing infrastructure. We can tap into your knowledge bases to service up those relevant answers um, and can be trained without any te technical expertise being needed. Awesome. Thank you, Matt. Uh, next question is, are you taking on clients now? And second part is, what is your current user base? Absolutely. Um, we are taking on customers now. Um, and our current user case, some of these are kind of listed publicly on our website, um, range across uh, uh, various different industries. Um, and so something that's unique about being in kind of the chatbot and automation space is we are completely industry agnostic. Uh, so we have partners from companies like Toast uh, and Avero who are in the hospitality tech space um, through to Mutual of Omaha and teams that use us to support their internal sales centers. Um, so a number of different folks using Tala in a number of different industries and use cases. Perfect. And lastly, can you tell us about what you think will be the next major milestones going forward? Yeah. Um, so the, the next major milestone for us, and, and I touched on this briefly earlier, is um, as the core use case of Tala right now is um, where you have this existing knowledge and you have a customer base, whether that's your internal agents or your customers who are coming to your support site to, to ask questions and get answers. The next step for us is saying, well, what if the answer to that question isn't just a, a block of content in your knowledge base, but what if that's a process that needs to be kicked off? Um, so we already have the capability to, to integrate and build out these types of integrations and kick off these workflows from within our bot, um, but it's making that really consumable to our end customers and really delivering that to a much larger use, user base, um, which is kind of what we're, what we're one of the pieces we're going after now. Thank you so much for that, Matt. 
And uh, this brings us to about the halfway mark. So I'd like to add a little bit more housekeeping and then we'll keep the party going with Bean and Nano right after this. Of course, I have to remind you all that as always, you can go directly to netcapital.com and invest in each of these companies. Uh, they're actively raising capital and we will be having closing remarks after the final presentation. So do stick around for that. Uh, lastly, tomorrow, three more companies will present, which will round out our March demo day series. They're in the consumer goods and technology space. That's HubSide, Greenbox Robotics, and Mosquito Steve. Uh, so please join us again tomorrow. Uh, all that being said, uh, Steve Wilkinski, why don't you come on in and tell us about what you've built at BN Nano. Thanks. Sure. Thank you. First of all, thank you to Net Capital for giving us the opportunity to present tonight at Demo Days. I'm one of the co-founders. I'm also the CEO of BN Nano. And BN Nano is, we're an advanced manufacturing company that's based in North Carolina. So we're a little different. We're on the technology side of things. We're, we're a manufacturer. So we we make things as opposed, we're not really, we're not involved in software in any way. So we're a, a little bit of an outlier these days. What we manufacture is, it's a nanomaterial. It, it's an enhanced version of what's called a boron nitride nanotube. And we've enhanced it in such a way that we've even branded it. We call it the nanobarb. And I'll talk briefly about what that means here shortly. Today, we are actually the only company in the world with a viable process to manufacture any type of boron nitride nanotube at all. And what that means is, is it gives us the opportunity to transform, revitalize, and revolutionize industrial commodities. And that's a fancy way of saying we want to make things that have lost value over the years better. We have the opportunity through our material because of the properties that it possesses. Things like the fact that it's stronger than steel, or that it is thermally stable above 850 degrees C, or that it can move heat but block electricity. We have the ability to turn normal things into extraordinary things. And what that means is by adding a little bit of our material to other things, we make them better, we make them lighter, we make them stronger. That means we can make aluminum as strong as steel or titanium and even tougher than carbon fiber. We can add our material to copper and make it an advanced thermal management material to help make your cell phones and your laptops run better. We can turn polyester into a material that behaves more like Kevlar. We can make heat sinks out of plastic. Uh, we can make environmentally friendly fire prevention chemistries. And we can introduce new capabilities into water purifications. And we can even enable new technologies, new applications, like things like hypersonic travel. And we can enable humans to have extended time and space as we try to go back to the moon and even explore Mars. But we think, without getting too technical, we do think it's important to kind of give an overview of what a nanotube is and why it's special. And what we want to do is start with just a simple analogy. Uh, if you just think back in history, when the pyramids were being built, they had to add straw to the clay so that the bricks would be strong enough to build the pyramids. Without adding the straw to the clay, the bricks would not be able to support such a large and heavy structure. Essentially, what we have is we have a very high-tech straw, and our customers have very high-tech clays and very high-tech bricks. So just by adding our material to something, it makes it stronger, it makes it better. Uh, the second part of this is it's important to, to think of a nanotube as something like a drinking straw. It's a very long hollow tube that's very smooth. Now, if you could imagine putting that drinking straw into say a clump of Play-Doh, while it may make the Play-Doh stiffer and a little bit stronger, you have no problem pulling that straw in and out of the clay so that you could lose its support very easily. So when we were working on our nanomaterial, we wanted to fix that problem. And we looked to things that you deal with every day for inspiration. We looked at rebar and concrete. If you look at rebar, it is not smooth, it's textured and it's textured in such a way so that it can really lock into the, into the concrete and not slip out. So we set about changing the nanotube. We wanted to change that smooth surface and turn it into something that looked more like say rock candy, which was very jagged. And the picture that you see on the right is magnified close to a million times. And you can clearly see that our nanotubes now have this jagged surface, which will make it stay into the materials even better. So if you imagine this material being surrounded by that clump of Play-Doh, there's no way you're going to be able to pull it out easily. And that's one of the benefits of, of the nano barb. Well, so what do we do? What do we sell? Do we actually sell yet? So yeah, we do. We sell. We're post-revenue. We actually started selling our, our initial materials back in 2018. And the primary product that we sell is the nano barb powder itself. This is something that our customers add to what they're making to make it lighter, to make it stronger, to make it better. 
if they, if we have a customer that is uncomfortable with selling or with using a nanomaterial themselves, we also have the ability to premix into epoxies, resins, or whatever chemistries they want us to do for them. Then we get into some of the more advanced products that we have. We have two products that are designed to service the, the, the metal industries. And these are designed to be added to molten metal. The first one is called the aluminum master alloy. And this is added to molten aluminum to make aluminum lighter and stronger. You can use this with any alloy. So you have a, a lot of opportunities to introduce lots of uh, strengthening properties. We also have a copper master alloy that we add to copper, molten copper to improve the thermal properties. So these are two ways that we have made it easier for our customers to use our materials. And then finally, we have the ability to compound, to mix, to blend our materials into uh, custom compounds for our, for our customers. And that includes things like nylon, polyester, polycarbonate, other metals, and even silicones and rubbers, which was a question that was asked, was asked earlier. And then these products are applicable and very advantageous for a lot of different markets. And the really interesting thing here to note is that it is one product. We have one version of the nanobar powder and it services all of these markets and these customers. The same product can be used for water, for composites, for additive manufacturing, for energy space, fire, uh, a lot of different applications. In many cases, it sounds almost too good to be true. But where we focus as a company is, first of all, we focus as the additive material, the raw material of selling the nanobarb itself. That's an $8 billion a year market. And again, that is used to add to other things to make them lighter, to make them stronger and better. When you get into our aluminum master alloy, that's a $200 billion market on its own. And there what we're doing is, again, we're competing with steels, with titanium, with carbon fiber and other exotic materials that are used in, in a variety of applications. The thermal management segment, which includes the copper master alloy is in excess of 20 billion a year. And then when we get into some of the, the more unique applications, the fire prevention and the water filtration, all of those are both greater than a billion dollars. And again, our customers service many additional markets. But the key thing here, again, it's one product. The one nanomaterial that we make has the opportunity to service all of these different markets. So we uh, are, here. I'm sorry. Oh, and look at you're wrapping up, but I was just going to say last, last moment here. Yep. So we are, you know, we're on net capital. We started raising funds in, in mid-February. We're at about $215,000 now. Um, we think net capital is an excellent opportunity for us to raise the capital that we need to really expand the company and to grow. Um, we would invite you to see our offering page to get more information about our company, our team, and our products. Um, we also invite questions. And if we don't get the opportunity to answer them here today, please post them on the discussion board and we'll answer them as soon as we can. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Steve. I guess I'm getting a little trigger happy on that timing. I'm sorry, I'm sorry Matt and Steve. I'm, I'm rushing you guys off. You have perfect timing, uh, so I apologize. Um, gr great questions are coming in already, and you did touch on two of them, but just to make sure that everybody's perfectly clear, people do want to know, um, can your product be added to copper? Can your product be added to rubber or silicone? And if it can, can it be applied to tires in the automobile industry? So kind of a three-part question there. Sure. So the copper certainly, and, and that's one of our products. And what we do, what we've done with the, the copper master alloy is we, we essentially, through powder metallurgy and using our material, we pre-mix the nanobars and the copper. We press them into a pellet that is about the size of a two nickels stacked together. And then the, the customers that we deal with that are making things out of copper will then just add those pellets to achieve the desired concentration of our material in their melt. And then they process it as normal. And most, if not all of the application that we've worked on copper thus far have been for thermal materials and thermal management. Um, yes, we can add the copper or yes, we can add the rubber and silicone. Um, one of the challenges we have is that a lot of the custom work that we do is protected under NDA with our customers. So all that we can say at this point is, yes, we can do it. Um, tires is an application of interest. And there are some publications that you can refer to in the academic, academia to sort of highlight what can be done with boron nitride nanotubes in those materials. And lastly, sorry, Tom, before you hop in here, adding on another kind of auto automobile contingent or adjacent section, Anything that you can add about brake lining really fast? Yeah, so it's another big area of interest because we can dissipate heat so quickly and are, are so uh, stable at high temperatures. It is absolutely something of interest for both the, the, the brake pads is where we've done more work than anywhere else. But, and also the fire 
retardant capabilities can also help some of the brake pads get very hot, and not catch on fire. Thanks, Steve. And to parlay off uh, Eric's question, we're, we're seeing a couple come in uh, regarding milestones. And when this is so applicable to so many different areas, can you talk about a little bit about what are some of the next major milestones for BN Nano? Certainly. So we, we have, you know, the, we have the IP, the IP is ours. We have the process to develop the products. So we're, we are sell actively selling the products. Our milestones right now are more in the line of getting our customers out of the qualification process and into the production in production. So that is one of the things that, you know, we're preparing for growth. The, the other things that we are doing is we just announced, uh, I think last week or the week before that we passed a milestone where we are opening a research and development facility in South Carolina. And then we are getting ready to announce a distribution agreement with a company in the EU to help us handle distribution throughout the, the European community. And then we are looking to really, I would say, solidify and finalize some strategic partnerships. So we are, most of the milestones we are, are, are striving for are now just really growing the business and growing the revenues. Great. Uh, and last piece here, and I'm going to try to tie it together. Uh, people are asking us specific about, are you able to, I think, synthesize BNNT uh, with control defects to improve their, I think it's Piezo electric properties. Don't yep. quote me on that. <laughs> so we, we haven't done a lot of work on piezo electric ourselves, but the process that we have, we like to refer to as elegantly simple. And we don't have, uh, we don't use catalysis or any other really contaminants. So we have a very, very pure material. Um, it is a boron nitride nanotube that is plated with hexagonal boride, um, hexagonal boron. So it is free of defects with the exception of there might be some hexagonal uh, boron nitride plates that have uh, broken off, if you will, from the nanotube itself. So it's a very high purity. Perfect. And lastly, um, when it comes to the competitive landscape, and I know your intellectual property strategy is around um, uh, not so much about patent, but about trade secrets. So as much as you're able to share, can you talk about how your cost comparison is to other materials in the space and, and what the competitive landscape looks like? Sure. So we, we have patented the morphology. So the, the nanobarb, having those plates on the outside of the nanotube is, is sort of fundamentally what's behind our patents. The process is trade secret protected. That is true. Um, fundamentally, the, the competitive landscapes, there are a few companies around the world that, that say they sell, but they only can sell grams where we can sell kilograms or as much as a, a customer wants. And in many cases, you can go onto the competitors' websites and see their pricing. Um, we're typically at least 10, if not 100x less than their costs at a significantly higher purity. So we right now, not only are the only company in the world that can give you mass uh, quantities of the material, we're magnitudes cheaper and our quality is higher. Thank you so much for that presentation, Steve. Um, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stop. Uh, there we go, thank you for sharing your screen. Uh, last but not least, I'm about to welcome Marvin Johnson and Tony Carter from Dashable up to, the, up to the stage. Before I do that, do remember to stick around for closing remarks. And closing remarks are going to go in reverse order. Uh, so Dashable will start us off. Uh, Steve with the Nana will be after that. Tala, and we'll, we'll finish off with MyXR. Um, and then we'll do a couple closing remarks and let everybody uh, head home for the evening. So please do stick around. But uh, before that, please welcome, help me in welcoming Marvin Johnson with Dashable. Come on in, Marvin. And I think you're still muted. Sorry, Marvin, I still can't hear you. Let me see. Here we go. How about now? Perfect. Thank you. Hey, great, great. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Um, thanks for everyone, everyone for your time. My name is Marvin Johnson, co-founder and CEO of Dashable. So Dashable is a marketing customer engagement platform targeted at local retailers. We're a SaaS-based platform. And our, um, we had the initial idea for Dashable after um, speaking to some business owners that we knew that had run Groupon deals and just hearing them complain about all the trials and tribulations with Groupon from the high cost, no lack of repeat business, and most of all, lack of control over their, their marketing expense and how their campaigns are run. So our basic goal is to help these businesses. Um, what's going on? Sorry. <laughs> so what we found that these businesses really had a hard time though, finding new customers and keeping them coming back. So our main goal is to help these local retailers increase the lifetime value of the customers by you know, finding new customers and then incentivizing them to, to come back. And then on the, at the same point in time, you know, um, 
Tony and I, we also had issues with Groupon ourselves back in the day. And we're getting a lot of offers that we would never want to use. And we had bought vouchers that expires, things of that nature. And just as a point, as um, an example is I still get emails from Groupon all the time for things like laser hail removal, things of that nature that I'll never use, but I continue to get all these offers and things that I never want to engage with. So helping customers know, explore the community, shop local, um, find new things while at the same time saving money. A little bit about Tony and myself. Tony's on the call as well. Now, I've known Tony for about 20 years. We've done many different things, the military experience and Fortune 500 experience. Um, as I said, we've done many, many projects over the years. Um, one notable achievement is um, we had a company called Icobo. Uh, we raised venture capital. It was a global money transfer system or money transfer platform. Um, and we had an, an exit for that back in um, the mid you know, 20, 20, 2005 or so. So um, I'm gonna take you through a quick overview of uh, the business and spend most of the time doing a demo. So as I said before, what we're really trying to do is help these businesses engage customers throughout the entire life cycle. So we're building a platform for marketing and engagement, starting with deals to help these businesses find new customers, bring them in the door, then integrated loyalty um, to keep those customers coming back. We're building out an increasing suite of customer engagement tools to the platform, things like email marketing, um, SMS marketing, things of that nature. And all our products and services sit on top of one database. So we're collecting information from all those different channels and using that to optimize the platform from the standpoint of allowing the businesses to market more effectively and allowing our platform to really learn what customers want. So we're presenting to the customers things that they're going to want to engage with over the time period that they're using these using our platform. So I'll take you through a quick demo. It's on YouTube if it opens up correctly. Here we go. Uh-oh. That's right. We can give it a moment. Give it a moment. <laughs> it's getting there. There it is. I actually kicked everyone off the internet before we started this. Uh, so I'm gonna take you through a couple of our user interfaces. Um, we have a, a merchant portal that merchants use to create deals and a consumer app that consumers use to engage with the platform. So I'll show you a high level overview of both those sides. We have other interfaces, but we don't have time to show you the entire platform. We built a pretty uh, extensive platform so far. And one of the major things we wanted to do is make the platform from a merchant standpoint really easy and easy and quick to use and provide us the ability to scale really quickly without having a big sales force and things of that nature. So you see, we've kind of really streamlined the sign-up process. So I'll take you through the merchant sign-up process and how a merchant uses the platform. So the first thing a, a merchant would do is go to our website and, and find their business within Yelp. So what we do, we call out to help the business find their profile in Yelp. And then we pull in information from their Yelp profile to populate their um, their business profile on Dashboard, which helps them you know, move quickly through the signer process. They don't have to type a lot of information in and things of that nature. So at this point, the business owner is finding, them, finding themselves in Yelp. They connect to Yelp. We extract information from Yelp about the business, and they continue through the signer process. And they really like this because it allows them to really get started pretty quickly. And the next thing we do is uh, we verify the phone number that we pulled from Yelp as a security feature. So before you can take a deal live, you actually have to verify the phone number that we extracted from Yelp. We don't let you type that phone number in. We take you through a quick verification process, and all this helps us to really scale really quickly, let businesses sign up on their own volition without any handholding from us. So the first thing a person is wanting to do, so I'm inside the merchant portal that a merchant would use. Um, the first thing we want them to do is create a campaign. And it literally takes 10 minutes from the time you land on our website sign up, get verified, and launch your Facebook campaign. So the first thing they do is pick a name, an internal name for their campaign, and they pick the type of deal they want to run. We have six different types of deals. And as you see, as they, as they select the radio buttons, the fields change. It's kind of like fill in the blank, make it really easy for them. And the right-hand side, they can see how the deal is going to look in our mobile app that consumers will see. So I select the type of deal. We're doing a percentage off deal. So it's 50% off a a variety pack of baklava. This is from Brooklyn Baklava a Company here in Brooklyn, New York. Um, they input a, a description of the deal. And then next thing they can do, they can limit the number of people that can redeem the deal. So they can input down here, how many people can come actually redeem the deal. In this case, we'll say 100. This is good for the first 100 people that show up to redeem the deal. 
They can add some other um, optional information and they can input the, the amount or the cost of that item prior to the discount. So we can give them reports and things of that nature so they can track their marketing expense. Uh, to make it easy for these business owners, because a lot of them aren't really tech savvy, we actually extract pictures from Yelp as well. So they can select a picture from Yelp that we've already um, downloaded and use that, that picture as the image of the deal. Make it really quick and simple for them. So they select the image, crop it, they go to next, they review the deal, press go live, and that deal becomes immediately live on our platform for customers to find. So you see it's really quick and simple for them to get up and running very quickly without any handholding from a salesperson. So the next thing I'm gonna take you through is creating a loyalty, a loyalty program. So our dashboard loyalty program is pretty much like a digital loyalty card that you can store in your dashboard app. So the business owner would select how many stars a person would need to complete their loyalty card. Um, in this case is 10. This level here is the, the number of the card the person has. So in our platform, once you complete your first loyalty card and get your reward for your first loyalty card, you get a second card. And that second card can be configured completely different than the first card. So we can have increasing rewards the more loyal you are to, the, to, the, to that business. So input the number of stars, a description of what you have to do, what you're getting for this loyalty program and what you have to do to get a star. So the next thing we do is create the deal that's associated with that loyalty card. So once I get those 10 loyalty stars, what do I get? In this case, I'm getting a free sample pack. So the next thing they do is create a deal that's associated with completing that card. So it's basically a something free deal, which is our free variety pack. So you get a variety pack free as soon as you complete your loyalty card. Yeah. And that, that deal is automatically put in your dashboard app when you complete your loyalty card. And we'll show you the consumer interface um, really quickly in a second. And I submit, and now that loyalty program is active and people can start enrolling that loyalty program and collecting stars and earning rewards. So this is our consumer facing mobile app. So it's a location based app. So you can find deals around you as you're walking um, down the street, you can find local deals in your vicinity and take advantage of those deals in real time. There's no vouchers or buy things of that nature. You see, you see a deal you want, just go into that business and redeem that deal. So there's a map view within the app. So you can find deals in the app um, via the map. Um, as we get to the next part, we also have something where you can actually swipe right and left on deals. You swipe right on deals you like, swipe left on deals you don't. It's fun and engaging for customers, but it also helps us feed our machine learning engine. So we're taking all that activity and building a profile around you. Um, so we'll be able to feed you deals that you're more likely going to want to take advantage of. So you can have fun swiping left and right, um, and that gives us data in the background. And the deals you swipe, um, I'm running out of time. Yeah, last little bit, but you can bring us on. Okay. We'll just shorten okay. up the questions a little bit. So to redeem a deal, you show up at the place and press a button on your screen or they press a button on the screen to redeem the deal. Um, and as far as the loyalty program goes, um, a business can set up a loyalty program like we showed before. I as a consumer can browse the different loyalty cards, enroll easily enroll in a loyalty program by um, clicking the loyalty card. Um, once I'm enrolled, I go to that business, do whatever I need to do to get a star on my loyalty card, the business owner will present a, a QR code that I scan um, to get a star on my card. And once I get the 10 stars, I automatically get that deal that the business owner has set up for me to get after I completed that loyalty card. And I, get back to the... I think that that's the end of the demo. Perfect, thank you so much, Marvin. Uh, Tom, okay. you wanna start us off? Yeah, absolutely, thanks, Marvin. Uh, first question coming in here is, um, what are the major criticisms of a Groupon and existing loyalty cards and how have you improved those experiences? So the problems with Groupon are that the, the thing we hear from business owners the most is control. Uh, so Groupon come, pretty much comes in and takes, it, takes control of your program. They kind of launch it when they want, they kind of curate it and they, they take the control out of the business owner's hands. And it's really slow because it takes several weeks and it doesn't allow the business owner to respond in real time to things going on in their marketplace at that given time. And the other big thing is cost. It costs an average $9,000 for a business to run a Groupon deal. So it's cost prohibitive for many businesses. And in many cases, um, many people will Groupon shop. So they get a large influx of business when they run the Groupon deal. They pretty much most of the time they lose money, but then those customers don't come back. So it's not a lot of customer retention. 
And as far as the loyalty card program, the biggest thing we hear from business owners is that people just lose their loyalty cards. You know, every time a person comes to the coffee shop, they've left a loyalty card at home. So they're reissuing loyalty cards. And what we found during the pandemic is that um, many of these local businesses were detached from their consumers because consumers weren't coming out anymore. And they weren't really connected to the consumers in a digital way where they could reach out to the consumers. So our platform allows them to stay engaged with the consumers. And at, in an um, extreme situation like the pandemic, um, people weren't coming into the businesses anymore. So they couldn't really communicate with those customers other than posting the things like Instagram of that nature. So that ability to connect with the consumers on an ongoing basis was another issue that we hear on a recurring basis. Yeah. And, and I know one of the things that's interesting is you have it built in to be able to, you know, the 10th cup uh, could be a different reward than that 20th cup versus that 30th cup. You know, maybe you don't always just want a cup free after your 50th cup of coffee. Maybe it is a mug or a tumbler or something. So I think that's really interesting being able to scale like that. Um, another question, is, and, and it's probably exactly. our last one actually, is just, is the plan to become, to compete with the merchant processor down the line or become a point of sale? Or, or do you actually handle the, the, the exchange of capital or no? No, we have it. We thought about getting into that. My background is in payments, but we're coming at it from a different angle. There's a lot of noise in that area where, um, you know, there's so many vendors going after the, the, the point of sale um, um, vertical and, and, and delivery. So we're kind of coming, coming at it from the other end of the spectrum, and providing this value. And we're looking at potentially going to add more payments type features in the future, but starting away from the noise of payments, because a lot of people trying to get... Um, businesses onboarding from a payments perspective. Uh, there, there certainly there certainly are. Um, thank you so much for that, Marvin. Appreciate that demo. Uh, this brings us into our closing remarks. So Marvin, I'm actually gonna keep you here, although you can uh, stop sharing your screen. Uh, but I wanna bring there you in here and, uh, and tell us a little bit, you know, as, you're, uh, as we're going through these last couple of moments, why is now, uh, and or you can welcome Tony up uh, if you'd like to speak to this, why is now yeah. the perfect time to go to netcapital.com and invest in Dashable? So now is a perfect time because the economy is reopening. You know, we had um, we launched right before the pandemic, um, and now the economy is opening, and we, we we expect to see a lot of people wanting to go out. Right now, everyone's at home ordering online, but when the when the economy opens, people are going to go out and about and do things in the real world. So we're a, a solution for real world activity versus online digital activity. I think we're going to see a massive shift in people wanting to go out to eat, wanting to go get their nails done, get their hair done, go to the gym, things of that nature. So, um, you know, the whole buy, you know, don't do what's, look forward, not backwards. In, in the future, you know, it's people getting out in the physical world and doing things. Oh, man, God willing. Uh, I'm looking forward to Korean barbecue. <laughs> um, sorry to do that to everybody on the line. Um, uh, thank you for that, Marvin and Tony. Uh, Steve, why don't you come up on here and tell us why is now the perfect time to go to netcapital.com and invest in BN Nano? Now's the perfect time to invest in BN Nano because we, we're a team that's really passionate about what we do. We have a product that is disruptive and actually has the potential to not only change the world, but change the way we explore space. We're in a fantastic position. We're the only company in the world that can make this material. And this material has been called out by organizations like NASA and the Air Force as necessary to do the things that we need to do this century but we're the only company that can make high volumes. And we also have the lowest prices. We have the highest quality. We've got the best material out there. Uh, I would, again, I would say, please visit our, our offering page to see more details. It is a highly technical product. We're glad to answer any questions. And I would also have to add before we leave, if anyone out there is considering working with Net Capital to raise funding, they have been absolutely phenomenal. They've exceeded our expectations and we can't recommend them high enough. Thank you. I'll, I'll send that Venmo right after this. Thanks, Steve. Um, no, no, I appreciate that. And then um, keeping the party going here, Matthew with Tala. Why is now the perfect time to go to netcapital.com and invest in Tala? Great. Uh, thanks, Eric and Thomas, for the opportunity to be here. Really appreciate it. Um, now's the perfect time to go on netcapital.com and invest in Tala. Um, because of our, our proven track record for delivering exceptional experiences to institutional customers across, across a wide range of industries, uh, including hospitality, finance, and insurance, just to name a few. Um, the speed and ease of deployment of Tala, as well as the ease of AI training, are, are unmatched elsewhere in the market today. Uh, we're well positioned for growth, and we look forward to continuing to provide tremendous value to both our customers uh, and investors. Thank you so much, Matt. And last, but certainly not least, Hans 
why is now the perfect time to go to netcapital.com and invest and invest in my XR? I think, well, it, here's the thing. When you're with so many great companies like we've been on tonight, it is a fantastic that we think about our solution fitting in each one of them. And it's just, just great to hear everybody's story. From a, from a MyXR standpoint, product, team, revenues, announcements coming, and institutional investors that have already signed up, it's a great time to come to, to Net Capital and see all these companies and certainly visit ours on, at MyXR. Thank you so much for that. That brings us uh, short and sweet and brings us home. So um, that concludes our regularly scheduled programming. A couple of closing remarks. This has been recorded and will be uploaded to the Net Capital YouTube account. A link to that has just been added to chat. Um, of course, you can go directly to netcapital.com and invest in each of these companies. Uh, I love these demo days specifically because um, you know investing in early stage companies is risky. Uh, and a, a strategic approach is to diversify. So uh, I love the idea of going in and investing in each of these companies uh, and, um, and, and you can do that right now. Um, future events, tomorrow, three companies in the consumer goods and technology space will present. That's HubSci, Greenbox Robotics, and Mosquito Steve. Uh, so please join me uh, and my good friend Tom on the line tomorrow. Uh, and, and that's all. Thank you so much to all the panelists for coming and speaking with us. And thank you so much for everybody uh, who attended. Enjoy the rest of your evening.